Well, a good friend of our show here, who's hardly ever here because he's normally on cruises, doing lectures and things like that. Howard Parkin, welcome back. Thank you, Paul. Nice to be here again. I hear you had a lockdown special event I did. happening this time I around. I did indeed. I decided when the lockdown started, as something I've been thinking about doing for a number of years, uh, which was to write a book mm. uh, about all the various experiences I've had with astronomy over the years. So it's finally come to fruition. My oh. book was published uh, last Thursday. Okay, don't just hold it up. Let's show from the title. Here we are. This is the book. Space for Dark Skies. Space for Dark Skies. I took a bit of thinking about the title. I wanted mm. to get the word spacing because it's not just about astronomy. It's about the Alman space industry. Mm. It's about the dark skies, which we've got these fantastic dark skies in the Isle of Man. And it's also about the Isle of Man. So hence the subtitle, An Astronomical Miscellany from the Isle of Man. Wow. That's a great title as a subtitle as well, you know. <laughs> um, okay, so your life's been interesting. I mean, and it's, it's, it goes through all why you're interested in doing what you're doing, I guess. Yeah. I mean, how did it all start? Well, that's, that's, that's the first, one of the first chapters, actually. It starts off the book with a story about the link with Nicole Stott when we did that live link in the museum. That was, I think, the catalyst, if you like, made me do it. But my personal memories start from when Yuri Gagarin went into space in 1961 and uh, my mum came outside in the road where me and my friends were playing football and said, come in, boys, and watch this man. He's just been into space. I was an eight-year-old. A man had been into space? Wow. Wow. And that was it. I was hooked and I have been ever since. And we are blessed in the old man because you alluded to that, you know, the dark skies. We, we probably don't make enough of it sometimes. That we, we don't. have these brilliant places that you can look up and see things. Absolutely. I mean, people always come up to me when we get a clear night. And we've had a few really good nights recently. We had some mm. terrible nights. But we've had some wonderful clear nights. And people just look up and say, wow, what was that? And what am I looking at? And we've got two planets in the sky at the moment. And everyone can't miss one of them, Jupiter, very bright and the low in the southern horizon. And what's that bright star? It's not normally there, is it? They said, no, it's not. It's the planet Jupiter. Mm. And it's just sharing that interest and enthusiasm with people on a casual basis. It is not a wordy tome full of scientific concepts and all the rest. It's my personal memories and, uh, and little stories, some, some funny stories, some sad stories, um, but lots of stories. And at the back, I've got a whole host of chapters about um, what we can see from the other man throughout the various times of the year. Oh, right. So it really does appeal to people here as well. That's, I mean, that's the idea. Yeah. The, the yeah. idea is it's, it's, it's useful for anybody. Mm -hmm. I actually looked this statistic up. This is a boring statistic for you. You know, 88% of the world's population live above the equator. <laughs> really? So therefore, my book, my book covers 88% of the world's popular. But I've already had someone in Australia saying, but it doesn't cover Australia. No, but you're one of the 12. I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, I alluded to it at the beginning, you do uh, quite a lot of um, lectures. Yeah, all over the place. Not yeah. Just here, yeah, exactly, not just here, but you, you <coughs> found quite a niche, haven't you, in uh, Travel the World? Yeah, basically, I've been very fortunate, I don't deny it, I realise how fortunate I've been because I got involved in cruise lecturing about 10 years ago, and now I literally travel the world going on cruise ships talking about my, my hobby, my subject, which is astronomy. And I've met some wonderful people, some influential people, I've met some famous people, and it's just great. And of course, the more I do it, the more I do it again, I get asked to do more. I mean, during the lockdown, as well as writing my book, I did a series of lectures for Manx National Heritage, and I'm doing a few more of them this winter. And um, I'm always happy to talk about the subject to anyone who's prepared to listen. So <laughs> anyone watching, get in book, touch anytime. Yeah, booking's now available. I'll take my booking's 10%. Booking's available and the book. <laughs> I mean, on, the, on the book, where, where can you get hold of it? Um, it's available from myself direct. If you want to buy it from myself direct at howardparkin at uh, manx.net. Or, of course, all the good bookshops have got it. And I will be doing a series of book signings. I'm booked to do one in the Bridge Bookshop in Ramsey a week on Saturday, the 9th of, uh, of this month. It's the 8th, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also going to be doing one for Manx National Heritage. And it's also available in the Lexicon and um, the Book Company and uh, um, Waterstones, WH Smiths and so on. Even on the Steam Packet, I understand. Oh, really? Absolutely. But it's best if you buy it direct. Cause Absolutely. Can they sign it when you get of signed? Of course. I'd be more than happy. If you get in touch with me via yeah. email, I'm more than happy to sign it for you. And I've also said to people, I'm prepared to deliver it anywhere on the island. Oh. Yeah, I'll deliver it personally. I'm not saying when, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I can deliver it on the island. If you want it for someone across, then obviously there's postage involved, which is yeah. your concern. Yeah. Uh, but happy to deliver it uh, to people on the island wherever they want me to deliver it to. Any more books in with you? I mean, is that it, do you think? Well, it's funny you say that. I swore about last February, I thought, that's it, I'm not doing another one of these. But, you know, I've already got the plans for the next one. I'm already thinking about doing a book specifically about what we can see from the island's dark sky sites mm -hmm. and all the history and the, some of the mythology of the constellations, these wonderful stories, why they wove these stories. And, and you know, most of the constellations, there's a germ of truth in why they made it. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, my next one, if, if I get that far. Yeah, Depends how this one goes first. Yeah, but see, with the passion with you, I love, and someone watching this, some, maybe a youngster who might just 
think about, oh, I'll look up there and get, Do. get a telescope and all that sort of thing. Look up at the sky. You've never failed to be amazed. And I think I've said this to you when we did a show previously. Yeah. You don't need to know what you're looking at. Just look up and wonder. When you go and see a beautiful scenery, uh, you don't know the names of the mountains or the villages or the, the lakes you're looking at. You just marvel at the beauty of it. It's the same in astronomy. Just look up mm. and marvel at it. If you want to know more, fine. But don't look at the sun and all that. But Never just, look at the sun. Yeah. No, that's, 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 no, no, you've got to use special equipment for that. So don't ever do that. But the, the night sky, mm -hmm. anything you can look at, please do. And uh, if I can help in any way, please don't hesitate to get in touch.